Morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at New Town United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Bruce Bachelor-Glader, back from vacation. I'd say I'm rested and ready to go, but I'm probably rested and out of sync with what I do this morning, so I gotta get back into the groove again, so be patient with me. Uh, we are on the cusp of returning to worship regularly on August 1st. That's uh, two weeks from today, August 1st, will be a communion Sunday. We already have a good group of people in the sanctuary. We'll invite everybody back on August 1st, vaccinated and or mask if you prefer. We will continue to have the uh, transmitter on in the parking lot for drive-in worship as long as people are choosing to stay in their cars and we'll continue to live stream at least the sermon and parts of the service into the near future. We're trying to make this up as we go along, but we're very glad to see, I'm very glad to see faces in the sanctuary. It's much nicer talking to people than looking at myself on the screen, no matter how much I love looking at myself on the screen. I'd rather look at other people. I do want to remind you, if you're here, that uh, Pam Roy continues her Wednesday night study at 7 o'clock. We're studying Chronicles of Narnia, uh, C.S. Lewis's uh, uh, fantasy series, which is actually a religious allegory. Uh, and we'll continue to study that for the rest of the month. And if you want to get online, you know how to find get hold of Pam and get the link to that Zoom meeting. Also want to encourage everybody uh, here or outside of the church that the Little Pantry is always uh, happy to receive your donations. So continue to contribute to that and contribute money toward uh, inner parish ministries is also a good way to assist that. Right now we're continuing to receive our offering uh, in the offering basket as you leave and, and uh, come into church. Probably in due time we'll be passing the plates as well. Upper rooms are here. If you haven't picked up uh, the devotional for the next two months, I encourage you to do that. It's a big help to your spiritual life. So that's all I've got for now. I'm going to be moving the prayer concerns closer to the pastoral prayer after the sermon now. Uh, we've been doing it early in service. I'm going to be opening up those concerns and joys uh, closer to the prayer and also give people in the sanctuary a chance to add any concerns they might have at that time. So let's uh, begin our worship this morning by singing together the church's one foundation.
remain standing for the call to worship from far and near we gather together a call, call to unity in Christ built into one body we, we are the dwelling place, place of God may God guide our steps and direct our ways that we may reveal God's love in word and deed Holy Spirit flow through our worship Dwell in us this day and all days. Speak through our words, breathe into our thoughts, and gather us together as one community of faith. Build us together on the foundation that this is ours in Christ Jesus, our cornerstone. Flow through our days that we may be reflections of your presence. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. And join me in the prayer of confession. Guiding, guardian God, we do not want to be like sheep without a shepherd or strangers wandering alone in the world. We want to know your presence and trust that you will dwell within us. We yearn for conviction that your spirit flows in and through us. Fill us when we are empty. Forgive us when we are wrong. Guide us when we are lost. Comfort us when we are tired. Reconcile us when we are disconnected and guard our lives with your indwelling spirit. In your loving name we pray, amen. Christ is our peace, reconciling us with God and with one another. In our very lives, Christ dwells full of mercy and grace to draw us to the heart of God. Today's epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. One in Christ. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off and have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. And in his flesh, he has made us both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with his commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace. And might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it. For he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit into the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom, you are all, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel according to Mark chapter 6. 
verses 30 through 34 and 53 through 56. Feeding the 5,000. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognizing them and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land, they came to land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. your presence here with us this morning we know that you'll never forsake us or leave us so we pray that we might draw closer to you through all that we do through our prayers through scripture through the preaching of your word help us to recognize and embrace your presence in our lives that we might know you and love you more and then reach out into the world with the love of Christ in your name we pray amen 
Well, as I greeted some people before worship, everyone was asking uh, me how our vacation went, and uh, Sue and I had a lovely vacation with her family, with her sister and brother-in-law, and uh, our nie her niece, and uh, we had a great time in Park Ridge, Illinois, and then to their second place out by the Mississippi River near Galena, a lovely, lovely little village. If you ever saw that movie, uh, Field of Dreams, it's, they use that town as that's the little town where Burt Lancaster was a doctor back in the past because it has a real old-timey feel to it but it's a lovely lovely place to be but as we were out and about I thought first of all it's nice to get out of Dodge to get out of Ohio to get in the car to actually travel to another place to to feel safely vaccinated and to be with a bunch of number of different crowds who either were vaccinated or pre pretending to be because <laughs> nobody much was wearing a mask but felt very safe and it was nice to be out outdoors in nature, to begin to enjoy the summer again, to begin to enjoy what it means to be social creatures. And it got me thinking about the church. Of course, I always think about the church because it's a big part of my life, but I was thinking about the church and how God has created us to be part of community. If you read the scriptures, it's never about, indiv it's about individuals, but most of all, it's about communities, whether it's, uh, the Jews, the, uh, the, you know, the chosen people, or it's about the church, Gentiles and Jews together. It's about community. It's about being together with other people. When the Bible talks about sin, it's not in a singular, but it's also, it's always in a plural. God wants us to deal with our stuff as a community. So as I was looking at the scripture today, it seems to me that Jesus was very much aware that his followers needed time to be with themselves, time to be with God, time to be in that private place, you know, that room where you, where you shut the door and, and you spend time with God. But then they also needed to be out and about with people. It was very important to keep everything in balance. If the disciples did not spend time with Jesus, listening and learning from him, they wouldn't really have much to share with the world. So they needed time apart and they needed time together. Now, what was interesting when, when this passage starts, Jesus is realizing he's, re at the beginning of chapter 6, he preaches in Nazareth, his hometown. He's kind of rejected there. They really can't understand what he's all about. But he also realizes that there's, there's a mission to be about, and there's there need to get out past his hometown, out into the world. In many ways, a rejection from his hometown was a reminder to him that God has sent him forth to be a ministry, first of all, to the Jews, and eventually to the world. So he sends his disciples out two by two, and they go out into the world. They're sent out into the world. Which brings me to, it's a teachable moment to remind us of the difference between being a disciple of Jesus and being an apostle of Jesus. To be a disciple of someone means you are a student, you are a follower, you are someone who wants to learn from your master teacher. So to be a disciple of Jesus says we want to learn from him, we want to learn from him, we want to walk with him. To be an apostle, literally the Greek word apostle means to be sent out to be cast out, to be sent out into the world. So we spend time as disciples learning from Jesus, and then we need to send time, spend time as apostles going out in the name of Christ, making a difference in the world. And that's what we really need to do. So the disciples go out and they come back to Jesus after their, their ministry, and they're just so excited because they're, they're casting out demons, they're healing people, they are spreading the good news of the kingdom of God, and they are being, being well received. But when Jesus hears this from them, he says, okay, that's all well and good, but I think it's now time for a little me time. It's time for us to go to a quiet place and to spend time with God. So Jesus is trying to keep everything balanced. So uh, they go out, they decide they're going to, uh, they're gonna go out and uh, to a deserted place. So they, they get into their boat to drive out to that quiet place and the crowds that have been following Jesus said, look, look, there they are. They're in that little boat. They're going to go the other side of the lake. So I can just, they're running alongside the lake. They can hardly contain themselves. I really don't understand how they got the other side of the lake so quickly. But sure enough, by the time they get the other side of the lake, Jesus and the disciples get out there. They're waiting for them. They said, okay, we're at the deserted place too. What are you, uh, we're kind of hungry and we're kind of, you know, we're, we're in need of some healing. How about a nice little healing and preaching mission here? Now, the, the, the disciples are putting their heads together. So let's see, he sent us out. Why don't we flip that around? So they turn to Jesus and says, hey, Jesus, these people are hungry. Why don't you send them out 
and they use the same word apostle send them out to get some food <laughs> send them away from here so we can have some time for ourselves and of course jesus ah, you can't do that they're hungry they're in need so he turns this up and says well you give them something to eat and as you know that there comes a feeding of the multitude so they're all fed and happy and sassy and everything and everybody's content so then what happens after the feeding uh, Jesus decides he tells the disciples okay now this get in the boat and, and leave go to the other side of the lake again and Jesus puts them in the boat and he sends them away he says, uh-huh, now I can have some time for myself. <laughs> the crowds are gone. My disciples are gone. Now it's time for me. And I guess it's, uh, you're going to have a, a three-way, a Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. They're going to have, they're going to have a three-person three meeting. They're going to have a good time. Well, then, of course, he looks at the lake. And sure enough, the disciples have the, the lakes storming up. All heck's breaking loose. And Jesus says, I can't send those guys, guys away without me so then comes Jesus walks on the water and he calms the sea and he gets back into the boat with them so again he is called back and as they get back sure enough they get to the other side and there are more people that are sick more people in need of Jesus so they spend more time healing preaching and being with the people you see Jesus wants to keep things in balance but the reality is is that as he goes out into the world the world also comes to him which brings me to the main point of this message today, is that I think we need to realize that when it comes to me time and time for others, as a church, we've been pretty good focusing on me time. We've been pretty good focusing on ourselves. I look back on my history with the church, at, not only as a pastor, but as a Christian, and it seemed the church always did a pretty good job with themselves. That about 90% of what we did in all the churches I would belong to was things for ourselves. We worshiped on Sunday mornings by ourselves. We had Bible study for ourselves. We had vacation in Bible school, well, for ourselves and maybe for some evangelism. We, we had, we, some churches had um, evangelistic revival meetings to, for themselves, to care for themselves. And occasionally they'd reach out. The ladies were always good about this. Women always seemed to figure out that it was more than ourselves. And, and they, they worked, we worked with missionaries and they worked with outreach and supported schools and missions in Africa and India and all over the place. But again, as people have become older and more tired and things and more set in our ways, we have found ourselves spending more and more time with ourselves and not as much time with the world. I think the pandemic has just magnified that to a way that I could never have predicted. Good ways and bad ways. The good ways the pandemic has affected us is that we've used uh, Facebook and, and YouTube and social media in a way to not only keep in touch with one another as a congregation, but also to reach out to people uh, other parts of the country in, in big ways and small ways. My, my sister Ann, who will be coming to Cincinnati uh, this week, uh, lives in Seattle, and she's been a faithful watcher of worship here at Newtown. She watches it live which for her is 7.30 in the morning because there's a three hour difference. And I saw she was watching even when I was on vacation. You, would you believe it? She was watching other preachers here <laughs> because she got in the habit of going online for worship, which I think was a wonderful thing. And because of that, we were able to keep in touch with one another. But then something else strangely happened. As people became separated from one another, uh, the denomination did more inner searching, the more navel gazing, more contemplation about what we were doing as a denomination, more thinking about the lifespan of the church and the denomination and our teachings. And along with this pandemic came a lot of, I think, a thought that kind of impeded and got in the way of our mission and ministry. I've been trying to preach against that because I don't think that's very healthy. But the thing is, is that throughout the a year and a half, in some United Methodists have been talking about a church split, and some people have talked about the things that divide us, and consequently there are more than a few churches throughout the last year and a half who have sold their parsonages and gone to a part-time deal, which is working out good for us here at Newtown, don't get me wrong, but we're selling parsonages, we're combining churches, and the church is getting smaller and older and less relevant. Now, I think the church 
of Jesus Christ is an important thing. And the good news that we have to spread is more important than anything else in the world. But we have to keep our priorities straight and we have to say, God, help us get out into the world again. Help us to be such uh, prophets and proclaimers of good news that people in need will seek us out or want to perhaps have us touch their hands with the healing prayers of Jesus and bring hope and healing to the world again. But for you and I to do that, you see, we need to get out. We need to get out because the world is so unchurched now, majority of people don't know what goes on on Sunday morning. They don't understand what the church is all about. What they hear on the media and with other people is they have debates and conversations about what to think about Jesus. And Jesus is a pretty amazing character, you have to admit. You know, fully God, fully human. Uh, come to not only teach and preach, but to save the world through his sacrifice. It's a big, tall order. And if you don't understand Christ inside, if the Holy Spirit hasn't opened up your eyes to the truth and the power of Jesus Christ, this stuff seems like nonsense. So people argue and debate Jesus without really knowing him. They're talking about him, but not in a personal way. You know how it is when you love somebody, when you really love somebody. Sue loves me, and she can hear all kinds of trash talk sometimes about what other people think about me. But she knows me for who I am. And she'll say, no, Bruce is better than that. But she'll say, yeah, but you're kind of right. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce is better than that because I know him in my heart. And you see, that's the thing about Jesus. You and I can say, we can agree with the skeptic. We can say, we can understand why you might be saying that. We can understand what you might be thinking that. But I want you to know that Christ is God's message to the world, that God's love is real, that God's love is alive. Through Jesus Christ, we've been given the power to forgive. We've been given the ability to see ourselves as children of God. We've been given the ability to see ourselves as grace with blessing upon blessing upon blessing. We've been given a vision of the kingdom of God that is greater than any nation, greater than any words or attempt of peace that the world might offer. We've been given the possibilities to look into every neighborhood and see the light of Christ shining. We've been able to walk through, we've been able to look at the most devastated areas on the globe and see Christians at work, sacrificing, giving of themselves because Christ is real. I would even argue that we got through this pandemic primarily because of people of faith. People of faith. People that showed up and worked in those emergency rooms and in uh, hospital wards and nursing homes, knowing full well the risk, and yet saying, but I need to be here. I need to be here because God calls us to care for other people. I need to care for other people because God has cared for me. That's why I show up. That's why I reach out in love and support. We've gone through this pandemic because there are people that were always there for us, ahead of us, willing to risk their lives even when we were more inclined to hunker down and keep ourselves safe. We're there because love does not fail us, love does not hesitate, love does not stop working in the world. I'm here this morning preaching to you. I'm here showing up at Newtown because I believe the church is still God's agency for change and for love. And I've seen enough love in this little congregation. I've seen enough love in other churches. I've seen enough love in the pastors and the, and the churches that I know, of, the synagogues, the mosques, the, the mosques, the areas where, where faith is alive to encourage me that we are still where we need to be. But you see, the world needs to know that. And if the world needs to know that, you and I have to go out. It's easy to come up with excuses not to reach out with Christ. You might say, well, you know, I'm just not an evangelist. I'm not gonna collar somebody. And tell them we're going to go to hell. If they're not. I don't accept Jesus. I can't do that. And I say, well, neither can I. And you know, you say, well, I'm not much of a Bible scholar. I can't open up the Word of God. Well, maybe you can, but you know what? You can be the hands of Christ. You can be the love of God. All you need to do is get up in the morning, and say, God, work through me. God, work through me. And make it be so natural that I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to offer myself up to you every day. And allow you to transform me from the in, inside out and through the outside in. You see, that's what happened. When, when, when you show just a, small, a smidgen of love to another person, God will return that love back to you. You know that's true. 
as neighbors, as parents, as grandparents, as teachers, as community leaders, you know a little bit of love goes a long way. And the love of Christ goes even farther. <coughs> so what Jesus knew, Jesus knew very well he needed to remind his disciples that they needed a time apart. And I've got to believe that Jesus took many, much time apart to be with his Father in prayer. We just don't see it in the Bible because, you see, Jesus did so much in three years and the, and the Gospels are so short. We're, we're focusing on his deeds and acts of love. But Jesus took time, time to be with God. And that's no more clearly indicated than that night in Gethsemane, the night before his betrayal, where Jesus realized the most important thing he needed to do before making the ultimate sacrifice was to be in touch with God, to make sure he was on the right page, to make sure this was God's will, to make sure that it was intentionally what he needed to do. And all God asks for you and me is just to be in prayer. Say, Lord, I'm just one person, but use me today. Use me, send me where I need to be, and if I'm reluctant to go there, then use me where I am. Use me where I am. God is alive. Love is alive. The church is alive. But if that's going to be the case, we have to spend less time talking amongst ourselves and more time sharing the love of Christ with the world. I'm calling you to do nothing more, nothing less than I'm asking myself to do. And I confess that I'm not always on board with this. But I do believe, I do believe if we act in faith, if we open up ourselves to what God can do through us, God will use us. God will use you. People will be blessed. The love of Christ will be alive. Like the disciples, we want to learn. Our prayer for Christ means, Lord, make us apostles. Send us out into the world more. Help us realize that wherever we go, your love goes with us. So help us to forgive. Help us to proclaim your love through all that we do. And all will be well. Let's pray. Oh, I do want, before I pray, I just want to share some prayer concerns to give you a chance to share. Excuse me, I promise you give me a chance to share some joys and concerns. Uh, I just want to share with you... Uh, the latest about Terry Nipper. Terry Nipper, as you know, is a faithful member of this church. She was here every week to the drive-in service as well as much as she could. Terry suffered a recent stroke recently, a few weeks ago, and she's been in several places uh, recovering from that stroke. It's gonna be a long haul for her. She was at Mercy West Hospital this past week. She has now been transferred to Chesterwood Village, the advanced therapy wing. She's at Chesterwood Village now for advanced therapy. Howard and I saw her recently and the stroke has taken its toll on her, but she wants to be of, of help. She needs to be assisted and she's at a place where she needs to be. So please keep Terry, Terry Nippert in your prayers currently at Chesterwood Village, the advanced therapy wing. Also want to lift up personally in prayer uh, all the churches that I know in the United Methodist denomination who received a new pastor this month. I know uh, one church, uh, Pope Ridge, uh, Pastor Jim Deckis, it's his first Sunday there, and he is a local pastor. This is the very first church he was ever assigned to. He was involved in, in outreach ministries to, uh, to uh, urban ministry before. So I want to keep uh, Jim Deckis in our prayers in every, every church that has a new pastor uh, this month, and not just Methodist churches. I also want to pray for all the churches that are represented through the listeners of this uh, sermon and our worship that we want your church to receive the blessings in store for it. Also want to continue to pray for our uh, our troops overseas and for our returning troops and for our veterans at home. They continue to make great sacrifices in the midst of great conflict and we pray for peace. Also want to lift up uh, everyone hit by recent flooding, not only in the United States but in Germany, to pray for the thousands of people whose homes were ruined, whose lives, whose lives were took forever changed through the natural disasters and pray for those who come to their aid and pray for us as we work together through the changing climate of this globe to care and reach out for others. Are there other joys or concerns that you want to share this morning before I pray? Well then let us pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you so much for this church. Thank you so much because you are called us to be the body of Christ. We thank you for the privilege of representing you in the world, and we pray that we might allow you to live and grow through us. First of all, Jesus, we thank you for loving us, for forgiving us, for accepting us as we are, and for allowing us to grow to be more like you. 
Open up our eyes to the beauty of every person, especially people who see nothing of good inside themselves. Help us to shine that light of love to reveal to the world how much God, how much love is in them. We pray for victims of recent disasters. We pray for those veterans overseas and at home and our troops as well. We pray for the many, many people who continue to care for those who are ill. We pray for recent COVID uh, victims and we pray for those who are continuing to battle this tremendous disease. We thank you for vaccinations. We thank you for the resistance and the efficacy of, of the things we've received, but we pray to be good stewards of our lives, having received some kind of healing. We thank you so much for your love and your mercy. And we pray for you to open up our eyes to the light of the world. Help us to see people in need, but help us also to receive every good blessing. I thank you so much for New Town United Methodist Church and for the privilege of being pastored. And I pray that you might work with me and with the members of this church to be faithful and loving and kind. And bless us and keep us, Lord, each and every day. Grant us your peace and your power. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us join together praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now from far and wide, we have been brought close to one another in the heart of God. As we wander forth in this world, may we remember that God dwells in us and that God's spirit is as near to us as our very breath. Amen. Go now in love, joy, and peace.